Hi friends, my name is Mackenzie, also known as M to the Third on Instagram, and my full name, Mackenzie Mullen, here on YouTube. I am coming to you from a pretty gloomy spring day in Boston, um, but earlier this week we had some really nice weather. Um, I have been lounging on my hammock outside, which has been so nice. Um, I <laughs> We kind of had a big hubbub about a hammock that is acceptable for a fat person to, like the weight limit is acceptable for a fat person to be in. So it's like a stand hammock um, and it's been kind of making the rounds. Um, so yeah, that's been, it's been kind of fun to just like have this thing that's bringing a lot of people joy. Um, especially that like fat people sometimes can be excluded from. Um, so I'm really grateful for the Amazon review that sort of led to my purchasing of it and then sharing the information which led to other people purchasing it. It was a fun little like aside that happened th over the last week. Um, yeah, so I've been thinking a lot about spring. Stuff is beginning to bloom. My forsythia, which I will you will see later in this video or you've already seen depending on how I decide to edit it is like just on the verge of like really blooming in full force this weekend is Easter um, yeah so it's like definitely it is warming up even though we're still having some cold days um, I'm hoping we don't get another like full-blown snowstorm um, but you know it this is what like early spring is like in uh, New England and I'm sure others of you I know others of you are also sort of feeling the like anticipation and I've been talking about it now I think for like three podcast episodes so um, yeah here we are so I was thinking about what video I wanted to record and I thought I would highlight some of the patterns that I have knit in the past that are really appropriate and beautiful for spring. And I wanted to show you how I style them. As a plus size person, I know that I find it really helpful to see other people with body shapes or, you know, wearing sizes similar to mine, um, modeling stuff because the knitting community does not always put bigger bodies at the forefront. Um, especially in publications and stuff. And I know um, I've been getting a lot of new subscribers and followers on Instagram that I'm so grateful for. And a lot of people are reaching out just being like, it, I'm so glad to have found you because your body is similar to mine. And so I kind of want to lean into that a bit because I think it's important. It's something that I'm really passionate about and like any excuse these days to just get dressed up and have a good time. So um, yeah, I'm gonna put together some looks and talk to you about um, some of my favorite spring knitting that I have done in the past and continue to wear presently, as well as some like aspirational spring knitting. And I asked if anyone had any comments on my Instagram about just like knitting for spring, but really like sort of more transitional knitting where like, you know, already we know that knit garments are great for layering. So, um, but I guess more specifically questions about like what kind of fibers might be good. And um, yeah, I got some questions like that. So I thought I would talk about that a little bit. Um, so one of the things that I do for the spring is go back to pink in my hair um, because it just feels more bright and spring-like. Um, and it does change sort of like what I wear. Like I found that when my hair was green, I didn't wear as much green because it like becomes monochromatic. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've been pulling out like a lot of clothing that um, is green that I don't wear a lot so that's been kind of fun um, and yeah just like 
I'm just ready. I'm just ready for different weather. I'm ready for a picnic. I'm excited to eat deviled eggs this weekend. <laughs> um, yeah, so let me let me talk a little bit about some of my favorite spring knits um, that I've made that you've seen on the channel. Um, but I'm going to talk about them hopefully in a way that's a little bit different than I've talked about them in the past. Um, so the first one that I wanted to talk about is called The Once and Floral by Max the Knitter, um, who also designed, uh, or co-designed, I believe, the pattern that I just knit for my partner, um, very recently. That was the last episode, which I will link up here. Um, his designs are so playful. The color work is always very unique and interesting. Um, and so the Once in Floral was the first, um, sweater that I knit of his. It's supposed to be long sleeve. I made it short sleeve. I really like wearing this with, um, like I make most of my sweaters cropped and I have this long kind of smock dress that I like to wear it over and then I also have a couple skirts that I like to wear it with as well as a pair of pants. I used my yarn that I naturally dye um, called Mezcla for the body of it. It's in a color that I call La Cienega that it's like swamp basically so it's like this really I know that doesn't sound very appealing, <laughs> but it's kind of this great dark, uh, dark green um, that is dyed with weld and logwood. So that was what I used for the main body and then the top of it and the contrasting colors were knit with a, um, this was actually done with a superwash yarn that I was experimenting with. Um, when I in initially dyed the pink up at the top, it was far less purple, but I made the mistake of washing it with a, a soap that is not pH neutral, um, and it hued it more purple. So that's why when natural dyers say to use pH neutral soap, that's a great example as to why <laughs> we say that. Um, but yeah, I really like this sweater. It's like for what makes it spring for me, aside from florals for spring, groundbreaking, um, is that it's short sleeve, it's cropped, um, and it's like, and it's lightweight. So it's a great layer, but um, it still allows for, you know, if it gets warm, it's not like debilitating. To wear. The second sweater that I want to talk about, and all of these happen to be short sleeve. Um, I really enjoy short sleeve sweaters. I know that that's not for everyone, um, but I find it, like, I tend to not like, like, I tend to roll up my sleeves a lot, I guess, because I feel like it gets in the way, like, when I'm cooking or washing dishes. Um, I've gotten better about it, but um, for sweaters, it like doesn't make sense to push up the sleeves because the sleeves are usually pretty bulky. So um, making them short sleeves, I think, is um, an option that I really like. This design happens to be short sleeve, um, and it is called the Ballerina Wrap Top. If you saw my um, video where I sort of went over all of the stuff that I made last year in 2020, which I will again link up here. Um, this is a really awesome pattern. It's free on the Lion Brand website. And it's, yeah, it's exactly what it, you know, what the name suggests. It's a wrap top. I knit it out of uh, Zoe from Juniper Moon Farms, which is a 45, let me see, 60% cotton, 40% linen, not 45. Just talking out of my butt. It's fine. Um, and I use this really great color. It's called cardamom. And I wear this all the time. I find it very flattering. Um, and it's just overall a great top. I would really like to knit another one 
in a wool that's more fall, like maybe in like an orange color. Um, but for real, I wear this all the time. Um, it's great because it is cotton and linen. I can um, put it in the washing machine. I usually put it in a lingerie bag because of the very long ties so that they don't get caught on stuff and that works really well. Um, but yeah, I like, I seriously can't say enough about this. I love wearing it with skirts. I love wearing it over um, jumpsuits you know, with any of my linen pants, um, and the color is perfect. Oh, yeah, I think two of these are going to be green, and one of them is kind of like a pinky, per like, pink color with some purple undertones, and yeah, I think that's definitely, like, right in the wheelhouse of my, like, spring color palette. Um, I mean, I think in the winter I tend to veer a little more toward um, like lavender and mauve and darker oranges, whereas in the summer and spring I tend towards pink and greens, um, which I suppose isn't isn't that like groundbreaking or anything, but um, it is interesting, like, especially after looking at the pile of stuff that I made in 2020, to see how that changes with the season. And the last one that I want to mention is another short sleeve cropped sweater. <laughs> that is the Cotton Grass Jumper by Petite Knitter. And this, I love, love this pattern. Um, I used my yarn Liminal for this. So that's a DK weight that I have spun for me at a mill in uh, upstate New York. And then I naturally dye. So this was naturally dyed with matter and logwood. I was doing a ton of experiments um, to get this, like to get a variation of shades using matter and logwood together. Oh, there's a truck going by very loudly. I like to wear it over dresses and yeah it's just another like really versatile 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 piece um, that I can layer and feels very springy and yeah I just all of these again kind of occupy a very similar space like short sleeve um, sweaters that work for layering which I think is pretty much what I would define as like a spring um, garment. Those are the three garments that I feel like I wear constantly during the spring um, and I hope it gives you some inspiration as we're sort of moving into spring and summer. And then I also wanted to talk to you about my plans. Now if you haven't been here for a very long time, this is the first video of mine that you're seeing, um, I am getting ready for a cross-country move in a couple of months. And so these plans, like when I make making plans, it's mostly to be intentional about purchasing, it's intentional about what's using, what's going to be used in my stash, and these are all things um, that I have had in my queue for a long time. Um, there are things that that I that I already have stash yarn for. Um, yeah, so that's just kind of where I'm coming from, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be the next thing that I cast on. Um, they just are kind of ideas that I know would work well with my wardrobe that given the opportunity I could cast on and, and work on if that makes if that makes any sense <laughs> so the first one that I like oh, and I'm gonna um, swivel a little bit so that I can oh should I go this way mm, can't tell what's better maybe I'll go this way um, so that I can put photos for you here <laughs> so the first one that I've seen recently is the sorrel sorrel top but the sorrel it's not the sweater it's like the sorrel spring top and again it's very much in line with what I like which is short sleeve and cropped um, you may have seen 
you may have seen um, the version of this that is long sleeve. It has this really cool like braiding effect at the top at the yoke. So I did um, a video about de-stashing and as I described in that video, um, some of the yarn that was in sweater quantities that I was getting rid of, I decided to sell instead of, um, you know, donating. And so when I decided to do that, I listed it on the website that shall not be named. So I got this message from Anisha on Ravelry who was asking if I wanted to trade. And when I first saw this for some of the yarn that I had, I was like, mm, it's gonna have to be like really special for me to trade this specific yarn, right? Um, I knew how much it cost and I was just like, man, I don't know. So I looked to see what, and I, I'm laughing because it was like my dream come true, basically. <laughs> So she was offering me five skeins of a DK weight that is from an indie dyer that I had personally never heard of, but it's in, if you know me at all, my freaking color. Um, po it's called Pollen, and it is by uh, Explore Knits and Fibers, and it's on the Rocky DK base, which is Superwash Merino. Um, so sorry for the crinkling. Um, but yeah, and then she sent me this cute little, uh, calligraphied note with this yarn. And I sent her the, um, some Swan's Island eye cat, which I feel is like the best, it's such a good trade. Um, so I'm happy that someone is going to get that and be able to use it because it's a beautiful yarn. I just ended up with so much really like royal purple, like I ended up with a lot of royal purple yarn in my stash because I do like purple and I've just learned that I like different shades. Oh yeah, there's kids outside. <laughs> I've realized that I like different shades than I was buying. Um, so with that, I would really love to make the sorrel uh, like shirt pattern. I think it would be super cute. I think I would wear it with a lot. I have a pink skirt in particular that I think that color would just be phenomenal with. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's one of the things. The other thing, like I mentioned, is I would really, really like to make another ballerina wrap top. And I could definitely do it out of liminal, which is my DK base. Um, but I was thinking more about like what an appropriate spring yarn would be and I can't help but think of silky wool. Um, it's a pretty uh, affordable yarn. It's $7.29 for a hank of it and it's 45% wool, 35% silk, and 20% nylon. And so I thought making another one in either like a dark pine green or a light tan. Um, that yarn is just so lightweight. It's very comfortable to wear. And, um, you know, the price point is pretty, pretty good for especially like a short sleeve shirt. Like even in my size, I think I would only need, I think I only used five skeins of Zoe on my previous one, so I can't imagine needing much more than that. Um, so yeah, I'll keep you updated on that. Uh, I'll keep you updated on if I decide to cast any of these on, you'll hear about it, don't worry. Um, they also sell that yarn at Webs, and there is a discount if you buy a certain amount. I'm not sure that I would need enough to qualify for the discount, but that's something to keep in mind maybe if you wanted to go in on it with a friend. That Webs discount has been super helpful for me in the past. Um, and then the last top that I'm really dreaming about, that this is probably the furthest aspirational knit <laughs> that I could think of is the Aura Sweater by Ginkgo Bee. Now this is so cute. It is a peplum top knit with mohair 
with like a mohair silk blend and it's light and airy and I'm gonna put um, s the photos of it as well as some of the samples and I was really made aware of it um, like I had seen it and then I saw this top that Amy from Knit Collage was wearing that is so cute and then I put it together that it was the same one. Um, Amy used these uh, indie dyed mohairs and striped them and I just love the way it turned out. Um, so yeah, I would love to do that, but I also know <laughs> that I'm not the biggest fan of mohair and I don't think that I would actually enjoy wearing it. <laughs> so there's some other options I'm, I'm sure I could think of to knit that out of. I think it's knit at like a looser gauge because of course the mohair kind of like wants to be able to breathe. Um, so that one is definitely TBD, <laughs> um, but I like the idea of it and I think that it could be really cute styled with some linen pants or something. So we'll see. So the last thing I wanted to talk about um, are the questions that I got on Instagram. Let me also check to see if there are any more. Sorry. So one question I got was, I would love to know your favorite fibers for spring and summer, especially for something like a lightweight cardi cardigan for chillier evenings outside. Um, and so that's, a, that's another thing that I didn't, I didn't include in sort of my aspirational knits because I think I view something like that more as like a fall layer for the way that I style stuff. I think in the spring I'm too excited for the like warmer climate. So I tend to like, like Kay always says, <laughs> dress for the weather you want not the not the weather you have which is like really foolish <laughs> but I tend to do that for sure so like in the spring I'll just wear like a corduroy jacket or like a denim jacket um I think that spring is really a time to let wool blends shine um so like cotton and wool silk and wool even like some mohair and wool um, I think it just won't, it will still keep you warm, but it won't be at, like, it won't be hot wearing it under the sun. Although wool is moisture wicking and there's like, you know, there's some people who wear wool all year round and that's great for them. I run very warm and, and find it very uncomfortable, especially if it's humid. Um, but yeah, I would say like the silky wool or any wool silk blend would be awesome. Um, I'm working right now with Cotton Comfort by Green Mountain Spinnery. I would also highly recommend that yarn. Um, but also just like woolen spun yarns that are very lightweight would be really awesome for that. I've really enjoyed working with Remix by Barocco, which uh, uses like recycled fabric to create that yarn. It's, I believe, mostly cotton. Um, like the actual fiber content of it. So yeah, I know, yeah, I know a friend who made like an open cardigan with Remix that I thought was beautiful and that she used for exactly that purpose of like wearing it, um, in the evenings, like around the fire, the fire pit. Uh, good, goodness gracious, I'm so excited for like spring to be in full effect. Hmm. <laughs> So yeah, those are kind of just, I mean, I, I never want to, like my goal in doing this podcast is not to be a definitive voice on, uh, you know, what yarns to use, what patterns you or I should be knitting. Um, I'm just really sharing with you what's worked for me and what I really enjoy and, uh, you know, how I wear it as a fat person and... I hope that that gives you some inspiration as to, you know, maybe some, maybe like breaking down some barriers about what you think you can or can't wear, um, what fibers you think you can, you can and can't work with. Like, um, there's just so much 
out there that I feel people don't always, there's just so many options out there that we could be infinitely creative with our knitting and um, I don't see that often. So, you know, I, tr I try my best to knit stuff that is off the beaten path um, and I hope that comes across here and that's again like I'm not trying to demonize anything I don't think anything is better or worse um, you know I don't think the things that I am not knitting are bad like that's that's not how this works I just um, I, oops. I find inspiration in putting together outfits thinking about my wardrobe as sort of this cohesive unit and I've been working really hard to get to that point over a lot of years and that's sort of the philosophy that I am trying to share you know it's not always easy and we've been in a pandemic for a year you know like I'm getting dressed up and putting on makeup to do this video with you but let me tell you most days I am wearing leggings and a t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay right now. So, you know, we're, especially as the vaccine rollout, you know, starts to kind of increase, um, you know, we're going to be able to go out. We're going to be able to go out and get dressed up and, you know, do more stuff. And I'm really looking forward to that. And I think in addition to just being excited for warmer weather, I'm also getting really excited for that little bit of agency and freedom back. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, um, definitely leave them down in the comments. Um, I am trying to stick to a weekly schedule, but frankly, I think I burnt myself out at the beginning of the year, so it might be every other week um, for a while as I get ready for the move, and I will be posting videos as I am moving. Um, not of me moving, just I will probably pre-get pre, <laughs> pre -get some videos ready to go. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for being here. If you liked this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. Um, if you, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. It's a very easy way to help out um, all of us who are making content for you online. And uh, I'll see you again next time. Bye.